Good morning, everyone. This is Ponishika Das, Senior Lecturer in the Department of Civil Engineering, IIMT College of Polytechnic, Greater Noida. Today, we will discuss a small topic, Energy Conservation Building Code from the subject, Energy Conservation. So, before we discuss the building codes, let us study in detail about the conservation of energy. Like what is energy and why do we need to conserve it? So we all know energy is nothing but it is a quantitative property that is transferred to a body or a system and it can be recognized by the performance of the work or by in the form of heat and light. In other words, it defines the ability of a system or a body to do a work. Now everything that we do in our day-to-day -day life, we are consuming certain kind of energy. Now the question is where this energy is coming out from? So one of the major source of energy that we generally use in our daily life is coming out from the fossil fuels in the form of coal, petroleum, diesel, kerosene, LPG, CNG, okay, for the generation of electricity, uh, cooking, for transportation, for all this purpose, we use this fossil fuels. Now, due to rapid increase in the population as well as in the development in India, the usage of these fossil fuels has tremendously increased for meeting the energy demand. Now, since these fossil fuels are the non-renewable energy source, that means once they are completely consumed, it takes thousands of years for its formation. So if we keep on using these fossil fuels in our future also, we may not be, our, the, our future generation may not be able to get sufficient energy from the fossil fuels. So this is where the energy conservation is important and the importance of energy conservation is we have to take into consideration over there because if we do not use it in a in a sustainable way then the, our future generation may not be able to use sufficient energy and hence may not be able to lead their life apart from this there is one more reason for which we need to uh, conserve the energy and that is for once where, while we are using this fossil fuels such as coal or petroleum we use it by burning it so when we burn this uh, fossil fuel such as for example coal when we burn a coal it uh, releases a steam and the steam is used to run the turbine and then which is connected to the generator and then to produce the electricity now uh, similarly all other fossil fuels be it kerosene or petrol or petroleum or lpg they are used in a similar way we use it by burning it so when they are burned, a huge amount of carbon is emitted. Now, when this carbon is releases into the atmosphere, it reacts with the atmospheric oxygen to form the carbon dioxide. Now, this carbon dioxide is a major constituent of the greenhouse gases. Now, what is greenhouse gases? Greenhouse gases are the gases which are responsible for trapping the solar heat within the Earth's atmosphere. It does not allow the heat coming out from the sun to go back it traps all the heat within the atmosphere of the earth which is responsible for global warming now what is global warming as we know that today's the change in the climate are mainly because of global warming okay because of global warming the average temperature of the earth is increasing day by day which is resulting in melting of glaciers causing flood uh, fires in the forest and many other consequences are there and we may have to suffer more consequences if we do not conserve if we do not stop now and we do not uh, educate the people to conserve the energy and we do not start it by ourselves so this is where energy conservation is important the main aim of this energy conservation is to achieve and maintain the optimum energy procurement and utilization throughout the organization by minimizing the waste of energy without affecting its production and quality. Okay, so energy conservation building code. So energy conservation building code, it is actually uh, uh, started by the government of India, Ministry of Pet uh, Power in the year 2007 as a first step towards energy efficiency in the building sector. The main aim of energy conservation building code is to provide minimum requirement for energy efficient design and construction of buildings. 
so this energy conservation codes they can be mainly applied in commercial building now what is commercial building any building that is not used for residential purpose or for manufacturing purpose or for agricultural purpose they are termed as commercial building for example offices then uh, hotels restaurants educational institutes uh, hospitals all this comes under the commercial building so the main scope is that it can be applied to a building complexes having a connected load of 500 kilo kilowatt or greater or a contract demand of 600 kilovolt ampere or greater however it is a voluntary adoption in india till now india has not mandated it however it can become mandatory after voluntary gazette notification by any state or central government as india is a tropical country which means that there is a huge variation in the climate in different parts of india and because of that reason we cannot adopt the same building code in entire india so for that government has taken a decision to group the entire india into five climatic zones as per the weather condition first is the composite which means that there is extreme hot during summer and extreme cold during winter an example of such reason is delhi the capital of india the second zone is hot dry zone which means that uh, there is hot in most part of the year and also the climate is very dry an example of such zone is ahmedabad in gujarat the third zone is the warm humid zone that means the temperature is warmer at the same time there is very high humidity and such example is kolkata the capital of west bengal so we have to design the building in such a way that enough ventilation can be provided within the building so that we can reduce the humidity effect the fourth is the moderate zone which is the most ideal uh, zones because the temperature remains almost ideal neither it is neither too hot in summer or not too cold in winter the temperature remains pleasant all the year example of such zone is bangalore in karnataka and the fifth and the last zone is the cold zone where there is cold in most part of the year an example of such zone is shillong from meghalaya so the buildings the building codes are adapted in this zones as per the weather conditions next this building codes cannot be adapted in applicable in all the buildings like we cannot apply such codes in the buildings that do not use any electricity or fossil fuels so if a building does not use any electricity or fossil fuels there is no need to because they are not conserving much of uh, sorry they are not utilizing much of energy so there is no need to uh, adapt any such codes next is the equipments and portion of building systems that use energy primarily for the manufacturing process so actually what happens is certain products they require certain temperature within a building and to keeping that into consideration those buildings are designed for manufacturing of a particular product so we cannot disturb those temperature we cannot disturb such uh, such things by including the building codes in the manufacturing buildings next is multi family buildings of three or fewer story and single family buildings since these are like the energy conservation of such building single buildings are very less as compared to the total energy conservation of a city or a state so this can be this uh, single family buildings or uh, multi family buildings of lesser stories can be uh, exempted from such codes however we can also we can definitely adopt certain energy conservation rules to preserve the energy for example uh, one of the best example of energy conservation is is uh, using a 10 watt led light in place of a 100 watt bulbs or a 20 watt cfl bulbs so this small small things can be adapted for conserving the energy next is the salient features of energy conservation building codes the first one is the building envelope which includes thermal performance requirements for walls roofs and windows in a building the part of the building which mainly experiences the weather condition extreme weather condition is the outer walls and the roofs so these should be designed or constructed in such a way that energy efficiency can be promoted for example 
in a hot area in a hot region where there is hot in most part of the year in such region cool roof can be adapted which means and and reflecting liquid can be utilized can be used in the roof so that whatever heat or light is entering into the roof it's coming into the roof they can be reflected back so it is not being absorbed into the building and hence we can pre prevent the building from extreme heat similarly in a cold region we can apply black coating so it it what is that is it absorbs the heat outside heat or sun's heat and makes the building hotter so similarly we can adapt certain uh, measures uh, depending upon the weather condition next is the lighting systems which includes the day lighting and lamp and illuminance performance requirement so for day lighting what we can do as we know that most part of the in a day in most of the parts we stay inside a building be it an office be it our houses be it a shopping mall be it uh, restaurants or hotels we stay inside a building so if a building is designed in such a way the windows are positioned in such a way that most of the daylight is entering into the building they will do not have to switch on the lights inside a building and we can conserve the energy in that way also uh, during night when we have to switch on the light uh, as i have already told, given an example that we can uh, switch to led lights which consumes only 10 watts 10 or fewer watts as compared to cfl bulbs or uh, the yellow bulbs consuming 100 watts next is hvac system which stands for heat ventilation and air conditioning system which includes the energy performance of chillers and air distribution system. So what we can do is that we can uh, reduce the HVAC load by providing sufficient ventilation into the building. We can reduce it by adapting, uh, even if you are buying, purchasing an AC, we can go for five-star rating AC rather than using two or three-star rating AC, which consumes more energy. Next is electrical system. Then we have water heating and pumping system. So nowadays, Solar water heater can be used in place of geysers, and hence we can preserve the energy by using only the solar water system. Next, I have taken a pie chart to explain the breakdown of electricity consumption in India. As we can see in this figure, that most of the electricity consumption it takes place in the industrial sector because they adapt there is manufacturing, some manufacturing or some production takes place, they require certain amount of energy. So uh, it is 41%, uh, which is the maximum energy consumption. Next is the building sector, which is 32%, approximately 32%. So by adapting certain codes, building codes, we can reduce the energy consumption in the building. Next, agricultural is 17%, and then other, other than that, we have 9% of electricity usage. Next, we have breakdown of electricity consumption in commercial building. So in a commercial building, as we can see that most of the electricity consumption is done by lighting. Okay, so this has been hide it. Okay, uh, pardon for that. But it is written lighting, which consume 59% of the electricity. That means, as I have mentioned, we can reduce it by, you know, uh, designing the building in such a way that maximum daylight enters the building and we do not have to switch on the lights and all during the daytime during the day hours then ac uh, consumes air condition air condition like it uh, conditioners they consumes 31 percent of the electricity we can also reduce it by you know adapting five star rating uh, ac which consumes less uh, energy at the same time we should not use ac all the time unnecessarily we also should take that into consideration that whenever it is extreme heat and we are not able to bear the that heat extreme heat then only we can switch on the ac otherwise unnecessarily we do not have to switch on the ac all the day next is the impact of energy conservation building codes so if we adapt the energy conservation codes properly, there are many positive impacts of the building codes, which includes market development for energy efficient products, building insulation. If the mostly the building, if the building is constructed of concrete, then we can provide sufficient, we should provide sufficient insulation in the building to prevent the dampness in the building. 
than energy efficient windows. Nowadays, smart windows are also uh, can be seen in many buildings. So what they do is they change their shades according to the weather conditions. Next, we have high efficiency HVAC system that can be achieved by using five star rating AC or refrigerators. Next, we have the improved design practice that can be adapted by providing sufficient ventilation or daylighting in the building uh, that depends upon the position of the balconies or the windows. Then lighting and daylighting, natural ventilation or free cooling system. Uh, if you provide sufficient natural ventilation within the building, then we do not have to switch on the AC all the time and we can conserve a huge amount of energy. Next, we have improved building performance. By adapting all the above features, we can improve the performance of the building in terms of energy conservation, lower HVAC load, lesser addition of power generation capacity. So in short, I would like to uh, say that, come to a conclusion with the word that if we properly design a building by pro providing proper ventilation in a building, by providing proper uh, windows in such a way that maximum daylight can enter into the building, but if we adapt small, small, uh, you know, uh, adaptions like, you know, switching on to a less energy conserved uh, less, or switching on to a energy efficient appliances so that we can reduce the energy usage or we can reduce the wastage of energy we can definitely promote the energy conservation one of the best way of or one of the best alternative way of using fossil fuels and preventing this fossil fuel is that we can go for solar energy as we know that solar energy is a clean energy which means if you are using a solar energy then it is not producing any environmental hazards like uh, unlike this uh, fossil fuels. So we can promote the use of solar energy as far as possible because solar energy can be utilized in almost every other sector. It can be used for electricity generation. It can be used for transportation. It can be used for cooking, heating. Everywhere we can use solar energy. So, and also solar energy is easily available uh, and it is locally available. So we do not have to install a huge plant and all, or we do not have to transfer the solar energy from one place to another place. It, it, it can be localized. It is locally available. It is available everywhere. So we, we can install these solar panels at our roof, uh, at the roof, at the roof of all the buildings so that that localized solar energy can be used and we can reduce the uh, cost as well as the energy during the transportation of energy and all. So I would like to conclude with this word. Thank you.